So today, we're going to talk about the Feast of Tabernacles. It's one of the uh, great feasts, uh, one that we will uh, be experiencing in the Millennial Kingdom. Um, it's also in the seventh month. So let's begin there. So we, let's turn to Leviticus, please, and uh, we will find out what's going on there. So we're going to go to Leviticus chapter 23. And we're going to start at verse 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles, for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you, and and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work within. Therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, uh, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, and a meat offering, and a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your free will offerings which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of godly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the children of Israel the feast of the Lord. Obviously, I just really focused on the Feast of Tabernacles there. Uh, Earlier on in Leviticus, we have given all the feasts of the Lord, but we're going to zoom in on this one, the Feast of Tabernacles, because the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot, or the Feast of Booths, uh, is another name. Uh, But really, it can be summed up as the season of joy, for joy predominates this holiday more than any other. Jewish people around the world construct a sukkot, or a sukkah, which is the singular, which are these frail huts to, to remind of God's provision and dependence on him. Sukkot is a memorial to remind of the building of booths during the wanderings in the wilderness. The Feast of Tabernacles was an annual reminder to the people that God is the great shepherd who has chosen to dab- tabernacle among them to protect and bless them wherever they wander. Now bear in mind, when Moses was given this by the Lord, they were in the wilderness. So they were already in tents, but you know what? You're not going to stay in a regular tent. You're going to build these booths. It's just going to be seven days. So you know what? You're just going to use these boughs of these trees. You're going to use these palm leaves, these palm, yeah, these palm leaves, and uh, you're just going to dwell, and you're going to be happy. You're going to be joyous. You're going to rejoice. So there we are. Our next reading, uh, I've labeled these, and actually it's great how I've done this. Uh, you, you can see my Bible later if you'd like. But the thing is, I've moved everything in order of the Bible, and it's actually flowing quite well. So in Deuteronomy, we shall go to Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 13. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days, After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine, and thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the Levite, the stranger, and the fatherless and the widow that are within thy gates. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose, because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all the works of thine hands, 
therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose in the Feast of Unleavened Bread and in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he has given thee. So this joyous feast, this Feast of Tabernacles, they're in these booths for seven days. It starts with the Sabbath, it ends with the Sabbath. It's also a harvest festival. It's the harvest time of the year. It's the seventh month. In fact, we're going to be, well, we won't personally be celebrating it, but I mean, they'll be celebrating this later on in September. Uh, just prior to that will be the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, the most solemn day. But the Feast of Tabernacles, wow, this, this, is, this, is, this really is fun. This is good. So let's move on, shall we? Let's press on. And we'll dive back into the Word here. So our next reading is in Ezra. And it's Ezra chapter 3. Now, Ezra and Nehemiah, because we're going to be going into Nehemiah after this shortly, this is after the time when Israel has come back into their land after being taken away to Babylon. And this is the thing that really struck me as weird, because as I was going through this and, uh, and, and, and studying this out, I thought that King David and King Solomon and a few of the other the kings carried on with celebrating this feast, but they didn't, as we will find out. Ezra chapter 3, verse 1. And when the seventh month was come and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josadak, and his brethren, the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, and built the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings thereon, as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Verse 4. They kept also the feast of tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required. All right, we're going to go on. We're going to move over to... Uh, Nehemiah now. We're going to go over to Nehemiah chapter 8. Now this is a wonderful uh, passage here in chapter 8 because it's the first part of uh, the reading of the law and the people are so excited because they haven't heard it. They haven't heard it for so long and they want to know more. They are hungry, uh, hungry for the word. And we're going we're gonna to skip down to uh, verse 13, and it's the second day. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, under Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make booths, as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come again, come again out of the captivity, made booths, and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, also Joshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. So here we are. Joshua, the son of Nun. So Joshua, he, he led the children of Israel after Moses. Yet the Feast of Tabernacles stopped there. What else stopped there? Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Okay, our next reading. We're going to be reading a lot here, so before we get into this, just uh, just bear with me. I did actually have a look at a few other notes uh, and a few other presentations. I was 
toying with the idea of a PDF presentation, but you know what, I didn't like other people's stuff, and I was, I was right, you know what, let's go back to the Word of God, because this is where, where it's all about. We, everything else is all lipstick, isn't it? So, uh, verse 4, sorry, uh, my reading is, reading number 4, we're in Isaiah, and uh, we're going to do uh, chapter 12, and it's going to be the first three days, uh, sorry, the first three verses. And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee, thou, though thou wast angry with me, thine anger, is, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation, I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song, he also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. All right. Now hold that one, hold that thought. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. Because we're going to come back to that one momentarily. Zechariah, our next reading, sorry. Forgive you. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1. Ask ye of the Lord, reign in the time of the latter rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. All right. So with Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Booths, we have a water ceremony. This water ceremony obviously, as we read in Leviticus, uh, was not in place then. So why did this water ceremony come about? Well, the last two there, we had in Isaiah, the wells of salvation, and then in Zechariah, there, the, the prayer for the latter rain. So we're going to find out a bit more as we moved into the Gospel of John, but before we get there, uh, rejoicing at the place of water drawing, Water was drawn from the Siloam Spring in Jerusalem every day of Sukkot with great ceremony. Then brought to the temple, here the priest made a libation of the water and wine during uh, the pouring of water. The origin, as I said, goes back to Isaiah 12, 3, with joy, with joy you shall draw water out of the wells of salvation for the spiritual side and for the physical side, Zechariah 10, 1, which is the prayer for the latter rains. Because bear in mind, Israel is such a interesting land it's besides the river jordan which is on the western side there's no other real rivers there's streams there's some springs but of course a lot of these are just seasonal they were dependent on god well, we're all dependent on god but they're really dependent on god for the former and the latter rains i mean to make this land lush yes they might have had a well but the problem with a well was it wasn't living water it was a stagnant well Living water is water that runs. We also know that living water is the Holy Spirit. So this water ceremony. So let's, uh, let's get to the exciting part. Let's, let's read about Jesus here, shall we, in, in this feast. Because this is, uh, we've done a little bit of background here. So let's turn to the, the Gospel of John, shall we? Um, we're going to go to uh, chapter 7. We might as well start off with verse 1. We've got a lot of reading today. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in the Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that my disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou... Do these things, show thyself to the world, for neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time has not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up into this feast. I go not up yet into, unto this feast, for my time has not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. All right, so let's just, uh, just pause there for a second. 
So, obviously, it's written in the law that all the Jews have to go down to Jerusalem for this feast. Uh, well, it's Jerusalem now, because obviously God chose the place, and Jerusalem's in the city, so that's where they're heading. But um, why does he want to go with these guys yet? Well, there's a reason for that, because it's kind of like a public event. It's like going on holiday, all right? It's like 4th of July. Everybody's like heading out on the roads. The roads are going to be like a mob scene. You're going to have these caravans of people. You know, everybody's happy, singing joyful songs, psalms, this, that, and the other. But you know what? Jesus, he needs a little time out. Um, because when you arrive there, you're building your booth. But the first night is the most important night. Because, of course, with uh, it's called Ushbzin, which means guests, invitation. Um, so you're highly honored if, you, if you're invited to somebody's booth and you get to have dinner with them. Uh, it's just like bragging rights. Well, Jesus wasn't into this, you know that. So he's like, no, I'm going to stick around. It wasn't because he, you know, he knew that they were after him. It was, it was none of that. Um, so anyway, that was interesting. So anyway, let's get back to our reading. Verse 10, chapter 7. Well, when his brethren were gone up, then went he up also unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him, for some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, how knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why ye go about to kill me? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil, who goest about to kill thee? <laughs> Jesus answered and said to them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave you unto circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers, and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on that Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them at Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? How, about, how be it we know this man whence he is? But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour is not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these? which this man hath done? Verse 32. The Pharisees heard that the people, heard that the people murmured such things concerned, concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. You shall seek me, and ye shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this? That he said, ye shall seek me and shall not find me, and where I am thither ye cannot come. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let's do a quick pause there, shall we? That is, all right. Remember, 
in our readings there, we talked about the depths and wells of salvation. We also talked about the latter rain. <laughs> Jesus stood and cried in the middle there, if any, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. That was just, that's like a microphone drop. People just like in awe, you know. Um, obviously, we, we, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, giving the Holy Spirit. And uh, it was just, doink, that's such a surreal moment. And profound, you know, whatever. It's just, ah. All right, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. As mentioned, the living water is not stagnant water, but running water. But we also take this as the Holy Spirit, for we know it's the Holy Spirit, because it says in parentheses, verse 39, but this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. The Holy Ghost was not yet given, because the Jews was not yet glorified, uh, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. All right. So we're going to move on a little bit. We're going to stop reading there. And then we're going to start again in chapter 8. Seven days is this feast. On the eighth day was the end of the feast. They put out the candles. This whole place was lit up like a Christmas tree. It was beyond a Christmas tree. Jerusalem, the temple with their lights, the illumination. It's huge. Lights, middle of night. I mean, it would be like Vegas. Then on the eighth day, the lights went out. Jesus, he's standing there. He's just gone through with that lady who was caught in the act of adultery. And uh, we're going we're gonna to pick up in verse 12 of chapter 8. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Wow, another one here. The lights have just gone out, and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I, though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whether I go, but ye cannot tell whether I come and whether I go. Ye judge after the, fledge, uh, after the flesh, I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. When Jesus stood in the temple claiming to be the light of the world, he was making a radical statement. Those who say that Jesus never claimed to be God have not dealt with this statement to stand in the middle of the temple in conjunction with the Feast of Tabernacles and say, I am the light. It's like saying, I am the Shekinah. I am the pillar of fire. It's hard to imagine a more graphic claim to deity. This festival is a joyous festival and will be one that will be observed in the future millennium reign of Jesus. Zechariah 14, uh, verses 16 through 19 tells us, the prophet Zechariah offered uh, forever. The prophet Zechariah forever identified the Feast of Tabernacles with the kingdom reign of the Lord as a time when all the nations will go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. We don't know what we'll be doing when Jesus reigns as King from Jerusalem, but we do know that we'll be celebrating this feast. Zechariah teaches that this Harvest celebration is pointing toward the future harvest of the nations to the Messiah. I got this little book, um, Israel's Holy Days, uh, in Type and Prophecy, by Daniel Fuchs. It was interesting. There's a few things in here, but I just want to just share a couple of things here with you with regards to the Feast of Tabernacles. Um, The seventh and last day of the feast is a very special day. It is called Hoshana Rabbah, the great Hoshana. In the synagogue during the morning service, after, after seven circuits are made around the altar with a lulav. You're like, what the heck's a lulav? Well, it's palm branches. They are beaten on the floor of the synagogue or its furniture while the worshippers are chanting, 
the voice announcing the coming of the Messiah is heard. The beating of the branches is, wor is a work which is illegal on the Sabbath. It is for that reason that the calendar was fixed in such a way that the new year would not occur on a Sunday so that Hushana Rabbah should not fall on the Sabbath, which would cause the taking of the willow to be cancelled. Interest in this. I mean, uh... all right. So we have a future time with the Lord doing this with him. Um, but to experience this with Jesus will be amazing. As one of the biggest fest festivals, all the Levitical priests, all 24 divisions, uh, actually were at this, which is kind of cool. I mean, the number 24, let me think about the 24 elders. Hmm, connection, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, um, we have to realize what this means with, with Jesus being the light of the world. So we're going to turn to John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. One page over, John chapter 1, verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, I'm going to back up there. We're going to do John 1, 1 right through. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Jesus, the light of the world. I mean, check this one out. Then we're going to go to First John. This is good sword rope practice here. First John, chapter 1, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Jesus is light. Jesus is God. Jesus is everything. As mentioned this morning in that last hymn that we sang to, it's all about Jesus. What are we going to do? We, uh, we got a wonderful time ahead of us, the millennial reign. And I look forward to finding out a little bit more about this. I hope I shared a little bit of insight into this. Um, there is a lot, lot more with the feasts and festivals. But um, Tristan and I actually experienced this at uh, the Cathedral of the Pines a couple of years ago, where we saw some Messianic Jews build some booths. Uh, which was wonderful to see, and the singing and the dancing. But uh, it's going to be even more when we're in the presence with our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. But first, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your word, for your truth. I thank you for the hope and the joy that you give. And Lord, I, I, I hope and pray that... Uh, Others, too, will experience this, this joy, this joy, this wonderful blessing. Uh, for you are the light of the world. I thank you and praise you in your precious name. In the name of Jesus. Amen.